Hi. So tonight we are going to make some black eyed peas. It's 531 and I'm starting from scratch. And here's the black eyed peas that you just get in the supermarket in bags or in bulk. Let me see if you can see them. They are delicious to cook. Some people cook them overnight. But we are going to cook them and eat at about 630 by using the, the uh, pressure cooker. In addition to that, I'm going to fry some onion to uh, combine with the cooked black eyed peas. And we will serve it with mashed potatoes and sweet relish and some uh, diced onions raw. It makes an extremely good, uh, hearty meal. So for this meal, we're gonna, we have these beautiful black eyed peas full of protein and fiber and other things and oil for, to fry the onion, salt, and I always put a little bit of hot uh, pepper in there, red pepper, and that's about it. Take about a, a cup of black eyed peas. I'm going to wash them in a minute, but first I'm going to get my cooker started. And as I've mentioned over and over, to be a vegetarian or a vegan, to eat as many legumes as we do, really important to use the uh, pressure cooker and I can't emphasize that enough. It took me a while to learn how to use it but I'm so glad I have. So I'm already starting the water in there. Of course you have uh, pressure cookers are different but I'm going to make sure my gasket is in properly. This uh, what some people call a stone. I don't know what they call it in English but it, it, it works all fine. Nice tight fit. And as you've seen many times, I just this is just a steel uh, mixing cup that I happen to use to put my beans in here and it just makes it easier to clean. So I'm just going to rinse this quickly with some water. Just rinsing it lightly. You can see the water is not uh, dirty. Not that dirty at all. Especially when you compare it to a lot of the, uh, the legumes I do cook. See, that water is almost completely clear. And I'll just rinse it one more time and put it in. And so I'm just going to um, transfer it here. Normally, you would just put it straight in the pan, but I, I just it makes it a little easier to have it here. It has no effect whatsoever on the taste of the beans. It just is a an easier thing to do and I'm going to add a little bit. I tend to rush. We're always hungry and I'm always starting a little later than I would like. So I keep it on high but the trade-off is that I stay right near it so it, nothing really burns. If it's on high and you leave you can easily burn the bottom and I've even once burned a hole in the bottom of a pressure cooker so you have to stay nearby. I'm going to make sure this fits nicely. This is already getting hot. And, you know, one of the tests I've been using is the pressure in here becomes enormous once it starts to boil. And the, the more the pressure, the le more these push against each other and you, you can't separate it. So here you see there's, with two fingers, there's not much pressure there. Once it starts to boil, I'll put this on top. Again, this is a, a me thing, just so that when it uh, boils and sprays, it doesn't spray all over the stove. So that's just a nicety. It is 536, and I'm just going to spend some time chopping the onion, but I'm going to turn the film off in the, in the meantime. Okay, it's 540, and this is starting to boil and it's getting harder to move this off and of course you don't want to move it off because it will kind of explode out but it's just showing me that the tension is building and it's going to start to cook the beans very quickly. In the meantime I've just diced my onion. I have about a cup of diced onion and I, it can be any kind of onion. A tablespoon of oil Again, because you're working with this that doesn't have anything, you can use more oil and you can use more salt if you like. And I, I always put a little red chili in 
but of course that's up to you to handle. Besides. And so here that is, and I'm just going to start that sautéing in here. When Once this cooks, I'm going to put it all in here and then stir it up and eat from this pan. So this is just going to be sautéing. It's uh, 5.42 and I'll turn the film on in a minute when it gets uh, more towards the boiling point. You can see here, you can't open it easily with two fingers and you don't want to. So, it's 5.44 and it looks like this is about to have its first whistle. The water's coming out, and I'm just stirring this up. And so I'll show you in a minute why I put this on. That's one way, and now you see why I put this on. It just keeps it a little bit clear. I'm going to turn the film off now until there are several more whistles, and then we can. Um, see what it looks like inside. So here it's 551 and this has uh, whistled many times. I'm going to turn it off at 551 and I'm actually going to move it off of the heat so it can start to cool down. You cannot touch anything until it cools down. It's still raging hot. In the meantime, I saute these and they don't have to be very well done, just lightly well done, because we are going to put the, the black eyed peas in here shortly, once, we, once this is cool enough to take the top off. And I just want to show you, this top is kind of wobbly, but there's no way you can get this off. The pressure is so great in, uh, within the pan, and you don't want to. It, it uh, can explode and uh, burn you and, and be very hurtful. But I'm just going to take it off the heat, let it cool down, and then I can take the lid off. It's 5.52, and I'm going to attend some other things while this cools down. And meanwhile, this is off. So these are both off right now. Okay. Getting back to the um, black-eyed peas, it is 6.03, and these have been sitting and cooling down a little bit. This is a separate, this is potatoes I'm cooking and that's under a separate video. But eventually this meal will go with these potatoes. But that again is recorded separately under mashed potatoes. But it's still cooking. So it's 6.04 now and I have the onions there that have been just uh, fried a little bit, sauteed a little bit. You notice there's not a whole lot of oil there. But you can add oil because there's not much oil in any of this. And I'm just going to see, put a little pressure here, and it actually was already, there was no pressure back there, so it had cooled off sufficiently. And again, as you all know, my test is if you can just open this, each number, this is a little, you know, wobbly. But if you can open it up easily with two fingers, then it's unlikely that this is going to explode back and hurt you in any way. Very hot. And I'm going to just check to see if they're done. And you see how mushy they are right away? So yay! These are done. You have to get to know your own pressure cooker and what it's telling you and uh, all those things. But I, I make mistakes. But clearly, um, I guess this was cooking for 15 minutes, and it's clear that these beans are nicely cooked. And they're going to continue to cook, but uh, not a whole lot longer, because we want to eat in just a few minutes. Sometimes it's quite disappointing when, when I haven't left it on long enough. And this I'm just going to add into here, the onions, and I'm going to start uh, cooking it up. You can have a watery uh, base to it like that. Some people like that. Or you can uh, start to mash them up, which I do, which makes it uh, get a little bit thicker and it just makes it thicker. 
by mashing a few up. They don't all get mashed up, but it takes it from a broth like that, which can be delicious, to a thicker, thicker broth. I'm going to let this simmer, and I'm positive I need salt in there. Now, what I do very often, because it is a little bit uh, arduous to make a bean, I'm going to save some of this and put it in the freezer for another time. I am going to transfer, just a little warm, these uh, black eyed peas into this container. I'm going to let it sit and cool and I'm going to freeze it. So next time when I come home and I'm in a rush to eat, I just pull this out of the freezer, uh, put it on the microwave or on the stove and add the onions and I have a whole meal very, very quickly. I can also put the finished product in the freezer and I do that sometimes. But this, in case you don't want to do this recipe, you have them ready for another recipe. And I'll just set that here so it can cool and I'll stick it in my freezer. It's all in the water. And I'm just going to add some of this broth here. And it's 609. And this has almost the perfect consistency for your meal. I am going to let this continue to cook. This is essentially done. And again, the more creamy you want it, thicker, the, you know, the more that you break them. I'm going to just let it keep cooking while I finish off the mashed potatoes on a separate film. So these are done at about 6.09. Okay, so it's 6.12, and uh, my mashed potatoes are here, ready to go. And my black-eyed peas are ready to go. They are boiling up way. You should really test for salt. There's, um, you almost always need to add a lot of salt. So here's one way to do it. Make a little dumpling there, simple. And then, uh, we like to eat that with a few things. So here I diced some onions, and this is plain old uh, relish, sweet relish. Uh, you, you sprinkle this on top, like that, and you sprinkle this on the side, on top, and you mix it up, and it's really delicious. There's also something else we love, and this is also on my website, it's called Maggi Seasoning. It's sort of like soy sauce, but not quite, but it also makes it a delicious meal. So that's what we eat with our black-eyed peas and potatoes. Black-eyed peas also go nicely with rice. So it's 6.14, and I said we'd have a meal in about an hour, and I think that's what we have right now. I hope you enjoy it.